Today, don't pass up the opportunity to earn money. I'll drive the body in immediately. Judge Cern's ruling this week should put an end to the AMC litigation. I want to discuss why this case's resolution benefits AMC and how it eliminates one of the short's unlawful methods of deceiving others. Wake up, AMC investors. The Delaware Court of Chancery judge will soon make a decision about the fairness of the agreement that would convert the AMC preferred shares into AMC shares. After witnessing the court case, the judge declares that if you're an investor sick of watching this depressing tale unfold, now is the moment to pay close attention so you don't miss any of the action. According to a June 30 report, Vice Chancellor Morganson, the case's presiding judge, is expected to render a verdict in a few weeks, although Riley and Citibank are hoping to learn more about the settlement this month. These two sources indicate that the decision will probably be made this week or the following. The decision is more likely to be made this week, most likely on Friday, due to the costs of the AMC 8 and the other possibilities, as well as the fact that last week was the 4th of July weekend. Some of these large banks and hedge funds may already be aware of the decision that will soon be made public. Edward Bochuk has, however, clearly clarified why AC benefits from the resolution of the AMC case. According to this report, Napstock has been remarkably consistent in recent days, most likely as a result of traders taking action based on the impending verdict. According to him, from its initial publication on August 22, 2022, banks and FINRA have been trading AMC against APE, or AMC against APE. They make use of ISDA swaps, derivatives, and stock abuse loopholes, offshore shells, and more. I have previously discussed in my videos how these hedge funds have been using APE shares to satisfy those AMC FTDs, because while APE and AMC are effectively two stocks or two different forms of shares of the same company, they have different QSIP numbers. As a result, these hedge funds and market makers have been manipulating AMC by using those APE shares as like-for-like -like securities. However, once this AMC lawsuit is over and APE convert back into AMC, the shorts will no longer be able to use those FTX synthetics, and they will soon be unable to use the APE shares to manipulate AMC as well. As Stephanie tweeted, this has put the shorts in a very difficult situation at the moment. The shorts have pushed the AMC price so low that no one is willing to sell, so even though the current price would be an attractive price for the shorts to cover, they can't because we have the flow locked. Um, the shorts obviously can't create additional shares to buy those shares to close out of their short positions because they'd obviously have to close out of their shares into the market and then buy them back, which would just put them back at square one. The shorts have to locate either real shares or the synthetic shares they've already sold into the market and buy those back to close out of their short positions while these shorts can synthetically short sell shares out of thin air, magically creating shares they can't synthetically buy. Uh, shares that don't yet exist, they need to be first created fakely f through synthetic shorter selling to then be brought back. There's a reason why there's such thing as synthetic short selling, but uh, not synthetic buying. And she said every time they push the price lower, it actually has the opposite effect because apes end up buying more shares. They've spent more than two years shaking the tree for low hang through AK those paper handers. That would sell their AMC shares. All they managed to do is convince 200, zero, zero, zero people down from 4 million to 3.8 million people to sell their shares, but uh, no more. Those who were going to sell did so long ago, and, and the rest of us are now immune to their tricks. Now, you can use Moomoo to purchase more shares in AMC, GameStop, or Ape in exchange for an additional $100 and a guaranteed free share of Google or Tesla. All you need to do to register for Mimu is click the link in the text below and pay the needed amount. By registering for Mimu, you can support the program and myself. It simply requires a little initial deposit and is free. To receive the $100 cash prize and five complimentary stocks, all you have to do is make a quick $100 deposit. All you need to do is make the minimum qualifying deposit to receive those guaranteed shares and additional free stocks. Charles Gasparino is yelling once more in an attempt to intimidate more customers into surrendering their stock. After the stock fell more than 90% from its peak, his friend asked him on Twitter last night if singers were still holding on to it. If 3.8 million owners still held shares last month and hadn't sold any, we questioned how AMC dropped from 72 cents per share to 5 cents per share. 
He emphasized his point by saying, you can't say that retail sold because that number has been the same for two years. In addition, he stated that if discussing proper short selling, it is important to inquire as to whether short interest have been in the 20 over the past two years, since January 2021. I wonder whose friend Doug Sifu was most likely requesting assistance from. <laughs> B. However, Travis had a really good response. Realistically, there haven't been many new legal short sellers based on that legally disclosed short interest. So how has the price dropped so much if retail investors and legal short sellers haven't been selling their shares and increasing their positions? This is especially true given that over the past two years, more retail investors have been steadily increasing their share counts. But clearly, neither short sellers nor legal short sellers have been increasing their positions. What else is left besides low-volume algorithms trading the price down with naked short selling since there's a high FTD count again? The head plant has tweeted that the average AMC cost-to-borrow fee is still more than 1,000%. This is simply one more unlawful shorting reality to add to the already enormous amount of evidence, especially because the shorts will lose another opportunity to control AMC when Ape ends up converting. Both the lowest and maximum borrowing costs are still well over 850%, and the average cost is still over 1,000%. I predict that this week will see a thousand-fold increase in the cost of borrowing money as well as the outcome of the litigation. 1,200%, 1,500%, or even 2,000% may be the maximum. According to Nate Anderson's intriguing tweet, Short sellers are beginning to get called on their margin and have to settle their loan. In order to support his high-risk short bets, he claims that Carl Eiskins has begun to borrow money and currently has $3.7 billion in personal debts. He pledged 320 million IEP shares as security, exceeding the 202 million he pledged the previous quarter. He will be required to repay all of his debt over the course of the following three years. Carl has consented to contribute additional collateral, bringing the amount to roughly $6 billion. This comprises roughly 320 million IEP shares and $2 billion of his personal wealth invested in IEP funds and its hedge funds. The repayment plan that ICANN has agreed to calls for paying back $500 million in September, $87.5 million every three months, and the remaining $2.5 billion over the course of three years. It appears that Carl I has used up all of his available borrowing funds. As security for his hedge firm, he even obtained personal loans in his own name. If Ken Griffin has large debts in his personal name to cover the Citadel's current profit requirements, that would be fascinating to know. At last, the next thing I want to discuss is a tweet from Mr. David Neo that I disagree with. Moving to the over-the-counter market is the best thing that can ever happen to a stock. The second best thing that can ever happen to a stock is being delisted from the New York Stock Exchange and from the NASD after moving OTC. Since we are all aware of how manipulative the over-the-counter markets are, I disagree with this. Sears, Toys R Us went out of business for just this reason. In January 2021, Blockbuster's stock price increased from $0.01 cent to roughly $0.20 cents per share. 